Good morning, everyone. We are going to get started with our day. We have a full day and a very exciting day looking at uh, not only borderline personality disorder and understanding it, supporting individuals with it, supporting providers doing their best to help, supporting family members who, who care so deeply and are often at such a loss of how to do that and how to take care of themselves. Um, it's very exciting to have people here for those topics, and not only those, but to explore one area that can be particularly challenging uh, that can show up, which is in addition to the things that we often think about with borderline personality disorder, emotions getting out of control, behaviors getting out of control, uh, one aspect of these difficulties um, is what's sometimes referred to as cognitive dysregulation. There's different ways that difficulties in thinking can occur. And we're going to be looking here at a variety of challenges that can happen in thinking. We have different presenters who have expertise who will address different types of difficulties, some more closely related to borderline personality disorder, some that might co-occur with borderline personality disorder. So that will be our focus uh, today. I, um, I'm Seth Axelrod. I'm an associate professor in the Yale School of Medicine. I lead uh, DBT programming in our adult intensive outpatient program. Um, I um, would like to say, in terms of the mission of this conference, in terms of, of doing the various things we do to raise awareness and support the various parties, again, providers, researchers, individuals struggling, family members, um, even in the last 24 hours, uh, I've run into incidents uh, of the need for this kind of work. Um, I received uh, one email from a family member who has been struggling with, with um, their child uh, at their wit's end, um, nothing making sense, and had just recently discovered this thing called borderline personality disorder and was able to find the book um, that uh, Sherry Manning put out, Loving Someone with Borderline Personality Disorder, and suddenly everything started to click, and suddenly this person was, had hope for that this is something that could be understood, there could be treatment. I believe uh, the, this family member may have come today, um, but I was so grateful to have the opportunity to offer something, and so grateful to have my collaboration with Perry Hoffman and with the National Education Alliance to offer conferences like these and that there are, uh, that there is information through this, through family connections, um, other, other things through their organization to help family members. Um, so I was, I, it, was, it was a wonderful thing to have that. Also, in, within the last day, um, I've had individuals strug who struggle with borderline personality disorder uh, bring things to my attention that speak to the problems of stigma, uh, the portrayals of borderline uh, that currently exist in our culture. Uh, one involves a current criminal case uh, it, where the prosecution raises the diagnosis of borderline personality disorder to discredit um, the person on trial, and that person may be guilty, but it again adds to the stigma that somehow borderline personality disorder is an explanation perhaps for heinous acts. And uh, that's very hurtful because that's, that's not uh, there's no reason to believe that this disorder translates into the level of destruction um, and, and criminal behavior that occurred. Another individual brought to my attention the Time Magazine just put out a spread on the mind and on disorders, uh, but their portrayal of borderline personality disorder included descriptions of that uh, individuals, when they try to hug someone, they claw them, that their, that their affections are so harsh and that the disorder is, um, is uh, relatively intractable and it makes things impossible for family members and, and is untreatable. And the, the article did go on and, and discuss some things related to hope, to discuss some things related to advances, but even there got a lot of the information wrong. So, so even the hopeful message was inaccurate and speaks to our need to educate ourselves and to help educate our community about uh, what this disorder actually is and what the, what the current science is and the treatments. Um, I, would, um, 
I'd like to uh, give some thanks to people uh, and organizations that are, let me see here. I'm realizing I am not sure how to advance. Let me use this one, this will work. No. Uh, trying to go to the next slide. Do I, oh, I know what I'm doing, here we go. Excuse me. Excuse me one moment for technical difficulties. There we go. Um, I've acknowledged uh, National Education Alliance. They are our primary um, uh, co-sponsors, providers of these conferences. Uh, we'll be hearing in a moment uh, welcoming remarks from uh, the president of National Education Alliance, Perry Hoffman. I also want to acknowledge Yale New Haven Psychiatric Hospital for supporting this conference, Yale Stress Center, and Yale School of Medicine. Um, in addition to our uh, our village who helps make this conference happen, including my conference coordinators. I couldn't have a more dedicated uh, team, our conference staff as well, and, uh, and a whole group, a large group of volunteers you'll see running around doing all kinds of conference tasks. Um, I'd like to uh, share a few businessy things before we go into our, our further welcomes and our first talk. Um, one is, one uh, question that often comes up are referrals. You'll be hearing about uh, the possibilities of treatments, and people often come here looking for referrals. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to visit our exhibitors. Um, uh, we have several specialty programs who, who have representatives um, who, who focus on, on really uh, helping individuals with borderline. Uh, included among them, our exhibitors, we have a table uh, with services from Yellow Haven Hospital. Uh, they are also aware of other services in this geographic area. So if people are looking for referrals, I encourage you to, to go to that table in particular to learn about local resources. Um, I'd like to mention that uh, we have a mixed audience, that this we deliberately include clinicians, mental health training, uh, those who are in training to become professionals or, or are, are developing their skills, um, individuals who have struggled with uh, mental health issues and particularly problems of borderline personality disorder related uh, and family members of those supporting. So I, I, uh, I'm grateful to have all this representation um, but also want to acknowledge that there may be different needs that are here and I want to encourage people who are, uh, if, if people find themselves personally affected by things that you hear, um, that it's important to take care of yourself. It's important to uh, if you need to take breaks from a talk, if you need to um, reach out to your supports or use your skills, uh, I encourage you to, to be aware. Things can be sensitive here, and I encourage our speakers, we will all do our best to speak sensitively about the issues we discuss. For family members, you'll be hearing from a family member who, is, who has gone through uh, something that may be similar to what you've gone through. Um, I encourage you to check out the resources through the National Education Alliance. Um, that may also be helpful in addition to this conference. Uh, for professionals, mo most, of, most of you in this crowd are professionals. Many of you are, uh, will get continuing education credits for being here. Um, uh, we, the expectation is that everyone sign in when you came into the conference. If you want credit and you haven't signed in, um, on the next break, please go back and they'll you know, sign in. Uh, but also make sure to sign out. Um, I believe that we are going to be uh, delivering the continuing education credits uh, for nurses at the end of the conference. I believe that's correct. So it's, you need to be here until the very end of the conference to sign out and get your credit. Um, we have a little more flexibility with social work. Uh, if you sign in and sign out, I believe we can give you credit for the amount of the conference you're here. Of course, we hope you're here for the entire day, uh, but we know there's some people who cannot. Um, Please be aware of where exits are in case we should need them. Please turn off your cell phones. That's much appreciated. As it turns out, uh, the reception down here is pretty lousy and it'll probably run down your battery anyway. So go ahead and turn off your cell phones. Um, disclosures. Uh, we've asked all our presenters to disclose any conflicts of interest. There, there aren't uh, any conflicts of interest. Um, I listed one uh, potential one, uh, which is that I do, uh, I contract with um, uh, uh, Marshall Linehan's behavioral tech. Um, it's not really a conflict, I don't think, but just to make you aware that, that I could be paid for 
uh, uh, delivering trainings related to some things you'll hear about. And uh, with that, I'd like to um, uh, move forward with our other opening remarks and um, welcomes. And I'd uh, like to share a public service announcement. Are we? Um... Okay, okay, I think we're, are we there? Okay. Um, this is a uh, recent public service announcement by the National Education Alliance for Borderline Personality Disorder. Uh, after we hear this, um, uh, we will welcome uh, Dr. Perry Hoffman, President of National Education Alliance on the forefront of advocacy for borderline personality disorder uh, in, in many national organizations. SAMHSA, National Institute of Mental Health, uh, has gotten NAMI to recognize borderline as a chronic mental illness, among her various other recognitions and accomplishments. They're wrong. 15 million Americans, along with their families, suffer with borderline personality disorder. Now, finally, there is hope and help. With treatment, many improve in just one year. With education, families face a brighter future. If you or a loved one is impacted, we're here for you. Contact the National Education Alliance for Borderline Personality Disorder at NEABPT.com. It will change your life. Um, one final announcement before Dr. Hoffman uh, joins us at the podium, actually if, if uh, Perry would come join us, uh, please do, is uh, we do have a full house. We have more people coming. Um, we're not at the point that every seat is sold, but we've actually got a pretty, a pretty big crowd. So I would invite people, if you were willing, to move in toward the center to make it easier for more people that are coming to, to get to seats. Please do. Um, if you're having trouble, if you're in the auditorium and having trouble finding seats, uh, there are plenty of seats available, uh, so please do, do come and find a seat. Uh, and I invite um, Dr. Perry Hoffman to come join us. Thanks, Seth, and good morning and welcome. It's really just wonderful to be here. Um, this is the ninth conference that we have done uh, with Yale, and I am proud and honored to be the president of the National Education Alliance for Borderline Personality Disorder. We're an organization that was started 12 years ago by family members, consumers, and one mental health professional. And we've been, we've been able to move beyond our initial dream, which was to start an organization in a small way that we could, per, could perhaps help family members. And from that, we've sort of spun into becoming I'd like to say almost the nation's voice on borderline personality disorder in the work that wonderful families have done. This PSA that you just saw was done totally voluntarily by a family connections leader, which is one of our, our programs that we do. Um, a man who is a film editor, he put this all together. If we were to pay for something like this, probably $50,000. So this is what our organization is about. We're about all volunteers, none of us get paid. But our effort is to put borderline personality disorder on the map. And in that, we have hosted over 50 conferences. We have a weekly call-in series, which someone stopped me this morning and said, I cannot believe that series. It's every Sunday night. It's um, all the best researchers and clinicians that you'll ever want to hear. We send out a PowerPoint presentation the week of that their call, and people just jump on the call. Dr. Jim Breeling, formerly of the Na uh, NIMH, the National Institute of Mental Health, moderates it. But we invite all of you to join that call if you'd like to learn more on a weekly basis about the disorder. And you can send us an email at neabpd um, at aol.com. I'm hoping through, through today you'll learn even more about the disorder and also have an opportunity perhaps to meet some of our Family Connections leaders. This is a 12-week course that we offer at no charge to family members across the country, some of whom participate by telephone because we don't have leaders in every area of the country. But particularly, we do have some wonderful leaders up here at Yale. There's a new group starting, so for anybody who'd like to join, uh, please also, send an email to neabpd at aol.com. So again, welcome to this wonderful conference. Next year will be the 10th year, and I started to look up what 10th is. 
I know it's not diamonds, but it's something. We'll have to figure what, it's, what it is. And from there, we'll, we'll plan an even more remarkable conference than the last nine. So thank you, Seth, and thank you for all of you for being here. And I hope you have a wonderful day and gain even more information on this very treatable disorder. My last comment is that May is BPD Awareness Month. We have wristbands. I was hoping to bring some today, but our second order didn't come in yet. But if you'd like to order one and honor May as BPD Awareness Month, please again send an email to <coughs> neabpd at aol.com. So thank you.